I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. We're in the Cotton Bowl press box where uh, we've just watched another classic in this Red River rivalry series, Oklahoma beating Texas 34 to 30. Barry, um, we knew that this Oklahoma team was improved, but we didn't know how much better they were. How much, how much better is this team? Well, compared to last year, much better. Um, we saw the defense put up a, a stiff fight. Of course, you know, better on offense, no doubt, particularly in this game with no Dylan Gabriel. But, you know, this was just a, a, a heroic, dramatic uh, victory in game. And, and give Texas credit. Horns came back. They were down 10 in the fourth quarter and came back and took a lead. So this was an epic game. But we've been saying for six months, eight months, 10 months maybe, hey, we're not going to know anything about the 23 Sooners until Texas. Texas has arrived. We know a lot about the Sooners. They're a Big 12 title contender. Heck, probably a college football playoff contender. Yeah, I think these two teams are going to meet again in Arlington. I think they're going to play for a Big 12 championship. I think Texas is that good. We saw them obviously beat Tex uh, beat Alabama in the non-conference. Kansas already. I mean, I think they've got a really good team. Um, and let's not forget that uh, Oklahoma, I mean, I think there's still going to be some stuff they're going to go back and want to get better on they intercepted Quinn Ewers the first two possessions Texas had and the rest of the day without those two interceptions he's 31 of 35 Barry so this is a defense that still has some things to work on but offensively this was a day for Dylan Gabriel he had the game-winning touchdown pass Nick Anderson with 15 seconds left Barry they get the ball back with a minute 17 and no timeouts how'd they manufacture this one well it was great uh, they did not face a second down that's how they scored you know you generally move the ball pretty good if you never face second down but uh just successful play after su mm -hmm. successful play really moved it down got in position got the touchdown pass with 15 seconds left just uh it was it was sort of nfl precision yeah. which is what i wish i now i'd put in my column man it's, it's filed <laughs> but uh but it looked like an NFL team out there generating with no with no time. So really solid, really solid ball by Gabriel. And I thought the defense hung in there. Um, you know, the uh, the goal line stand was was glorious from an Oklahoma standpoint. Four, uh, first and goal at the one, Texas four plays, does not score. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the Texas offense scored two touchdowns. You'll go home holding your head high if that's what you do. Yeah, and hey, an underrated play on that field goal drive that we thought might be the game-winning field goal, Jacob Lacey, the transfer defensive lineman, had a sack that changed the whole Texas thought process. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian said after the game that they went from thinking touchdown to thinking they're probably going to need a field goal in this situation. Obviously, that looms large because then Oklahoma's touchdown wins the day. Barry, a uh, parting thought from uh, Cotton Bowl here. What stands out to you as, as the Sooner season now moves forward? Well, well it just changes the, the Sooner narrative for this for the nation. They now look upon Oklahoma as back after a one-year hiatus <laughs> and, um, and clearly a playoff contender. The schedule is remarkably easy. Texas is, is really the only stumbling block that we know about for the Sooners, and the Sooners were only the, stumbling block, the only stumbling block for the Longhorns. The rest of the league looked really mediocre. Expect to see these teams back together in Arlington. Yep, for sure. At Sooners head into a bye week. We'll have a lot more on this win. Upcoming games, obviously a lot left to go uh, this year. So stay with us at selloutcrowd.com for all your Sooner coverage this season and beyond.